Hello, hello, Fortnite fans. Noob is here. It's been two years since I first dropped into Fortnite Chapter 1 100 times. Yeah, I know that's pretty hard for me to believe too, but it's true. And to celebrate that fact, I'm going to be going back through those original 100 games with all the knowledge and skills I've gained over the past two years and 740 drops. So before this intro gets too old, I dropped into Fortnite Chapter 1 100 times. And this is what happened. Welcome to Game 1, the real Game 1. This is, I'm pretty sure, the first full Battle Royale game played on Era. There were only 15 people in the match, but I never acknowledged that in the original video. Even with the tiny player count, I was still terrified to drop into Salty Springs, so I turned around and tried to drop into Shifty. I failed. It was fine, there was no one else there, because of course there wasn't. Even despite that, I still left Shifty with only green loot, and why am I not taking that big pot? Oh, I guess I did find another one later. I don't have any notes on this video, I'm just winging it. I made my way up to Tilted because it's the only place that you can 100% find people no matter how low the player count is. There were a few people in Tilted, but yeah, I don't consider myself good at Fortnite now now, and I was so much worse two years ago. Hey, we got 22 people in game two. I marked the motel. I did not drop there. In the original video, I wanted it to feel as authentic as possible, so I never acknowledged the low player counts, even though they were pretty egregious sometimes. Though even though there were only 20 people in this game, I actually did have competition in soccer stadium. I jumped out at him and flailed my arm around until I eventually killed him. At this broken house outside of Tilted, I found the all-powerful drum gun. I was very excited about it, even though I'm definitely going to be useless with it. I actually did manage to get one kill with it, definitely because that guy was somehow worse than me. That kill attracted Allyjax, who challenged me to a drum gun battle, but I ultimately ended it with my pump. The final circle was ended up around Stunt Mount, and I tried to sneak my way up these stairs, but I was spotted. And because everyone in this game was better than me, I did not make it out alive. In game 3, I was attacked by a default in Lazy Lynx. In true chapter 1 fashion, he didn't build at all, and then I killed him. I haven't seen most of this footage since I made the original video, but I do remember thinking that I had a pretty good chance of winning this game. Looking back on it now, though, I'm definitely calling that into question. It doesn't matter anyway, and we'll never find out, because the server crashed. This was early era multiplayer, everything was pretty unstable. In game 4, I got into a scuffle with Sizzy outside of Salty Springs. It was pretty sloppy just like every other fight, but I did eventually kill him. But because I had no mats, I was killed by a renegade raider very soon after. Looks like I couldn't find a shotgun in game 5, but I can't really blame my death on that because the other guy didn't even use one. Game 6 was also pretty terrible, I was killed by an Australian. In game 7, I landed Tomato Temple where I found and killed this lost little default. Later crouch walking into Dusty Divot, I tried to spray my way into this fight. It was a bad idea. In game 8, I hid until I made my way into my first 1v1. Despite the fact that I had a good amount of mats, I just hid on the bottom of the structure until I was pumped in the face for second place. In game 9, I landed Tilted Towers. I never do this nowadays, but that's mostly because there's usually more than 15 players. I made it out of Tilted Alive, almost. In game 10, the final circle was closing around Pleasant Park where I sniped the man sitting behind a tree in the back. I was soon attacked by someone far better than me, but thankfully he was on pretty low health. As I emerged from my rat hole, both me and the other player in the match showed this man his way to the kingdom of God. Immediately afterwards, he came after me, and I shot him one time for the victory, which was weirdly silent. I actually edited in the wind sound in the original video. I'm not going to bother to do that here, but hey, it's a fun fact. In game 11, it looks like everyone in this lobby was getting stopped up in this build fight outside of Salty Springs. As the storm was encroaching, I killed this oblivious default. Slightly more impressively, I killed this renegade raider, even though I doubt he actually owns that skin. And then I got shot through wall because I was on 130 ping throughout this entire video. Shot through wall again in game 12, but this time I don't even even have any kills to show you. I just died. Though looking back on this footage reminds me of all these people I haven't seen or talked to in a long time. Hope TI is doing good. Still no kills in game 13 and still getting killed by the same person. Put on John Wick in game 14, so clearly I was hoping I would do good. It didn't help at all. Wonder how I'm gonna get my shit rocked in game 15, because the way it's been going so far, it's definitely gonna happen. There's three people left, and I don't remember winning this one. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I know it's not gonna go well. I was hiding very shittily when I was sniped and then shot to death. In what seems like a rare occurrence in these games, I'm actually getting a kill in game 16. I forgot they had double pump enabled. Definitely an interesting choice. Server died again. Remember, this version of FMP was basically just being held together by hopes and dreams. I wanted to land Greasy Grove in game 17, but as soon as I picked up my gun, I had to run 18 miles to the circle. And because I had nothing to my name and had to run through Tilted, I was shot dead like my father and his father before him. Hey, we're getting some risky reels action in game 18. I missed this place. No, there's no action. I'm just farming metal. As the five tick storm closed in on me, I actually managed to get a kill. Though, unfortunately, I died beside him. Made it into the final circle game 19 while getting shot from every possible direction. I killed that rapscallion, but now I'm on very low health with a lot of eyes on me. I was able to get up to decent health and hide behind this tree till 1v1. The final player came out of the house to rush me, but I hit one nice pump shot for the win. Actually made it to the final circle with Wick in game 20. That's not impressive, but with how I play in this, I'll take anything. Custox and I were both rushing to get into the zone as the insanely fast Blitzstorm came upon us. I got the kill with my double pump, but because of that slick stair placement, I couldn't make it out. Finally grew the balls to land Salty Springs in game 21. Honestly, a lot of this footage does look genuine from chapter 1. I didn't realize just how bad everyone was in these games. There were still a few people who were actually good. Venom was one of them, and he killed me in this game. Look, my aim isn't very good now, but like, oh my 
god, it was horrendous in these games. Like, it honestly looks like I'm trolling half the time. It's honestly a lot of fun to look back at all this old footage. I really didn't realize how much I've improved in the past two years. And it feels a little weird to say, but I'm pretty nostalgic about this era of FMP. Like, it's very clearly better now, and I definitely prefer the public games, but I do miss how tight-knit the community was back then. It was a different time. It just kind of feels weird, because it's like, I'm nostalgic over a recreation of Chapter 1, and not Chapter 1 itself. In game 24, against my better judgment, I wandered into Salty Springs. And now, it's already over. In game 25, I landed at Tilted completely uncontested, which is still pretty rare even in games with only 10 people. I didn't see a single other human soul this entire game until I watched the only other person in the match succumb to the storm. For the first time in these games, my drop was directly contested in game 26. I pickaxed that default to death and carried on like nothing happened, even though I see his face every time I close my eyes. I went up to Tomato Temple where with my dying breath I stuck Jays with a clinger before quickly being killed myself, but at least I can rest happy knowing I violated the Geneva Conventions one last time. In game 27, I died horribly just like all the others, but this time it was due to teamers. I still have no idea who Donald Trump's supporter was, and I guess I'll never find out. In game 28, I chased Osni across pretty much the entire map, but then he shadowed me, so it didn't really matter anyway. Game 29 is broken. I can't import it into Premiere for some reason. It was duos with Jays. We landed tilted, I killed Sizzy, and then we died soon after. So you're not really missing out on much. Game 30 was some more duos. We landed retail, but the storm immediately pulled away from us, so we had to start running. The real version of Blitz didn't actually exist in the version we were playing, so they had to remake it customly from scratch, and it wouldn't tell us where the first zone was going until we already landed. Left injured from the storm without a shotgun, we ran into another squad that was making an exodus from Salty. With nothing but my blue SMG, I frantically sprayed down both of them, but the sound of that fight attracted bigger predators, and we simply weren't strong enough. In game 31, my teammate had no name, and we both snuck into the final circle with no kills. And it stayed that way until it's time to fight the final squad. I helped my teammate with my emotional support minigun, but ultimately he got the kill. Can't get carried in game 32 because we're back to solos and back to dying in increasingly gruesome ways. In game 33, I'm in salty with no shotgun. That never goes well, and it didn't. Game 34, I landed retail and got some pretty solid loot off rip. Got some even better loot later, which made it all the worse when the server crashed. Game 35, back in duos and back to wiping out kids in retail row. Storm was pretty bad again, though. That's just how it is in Blitz. Jeppy died and I was left injured from the storm with nothing to heal with. Also, my hiding spot wasn't too good. Not quite sure what was happening when I tried to drop in the greasy grove in game 36, but I made it to the ground eventually. On the edge of the storm in the final circle, my teammate got engaged in a fight, though our attacker left his wall open and I had a rocket. Jeremy unfortunately died in battle, but as the storm began to move again, I avenged his death before quickly dying in the storm myself. Game 37, my teammate was lost in the storm and reviving didn't work yet, and I can barely clutch out team wins nowadays, and if you couldn't tell already, back then I was pretty terrible. In game 38, my squad landed lazy links, but the storm pulled as far south as it could possibly go every single time. Needless to say, we didn't make it. In game 39, my claim to fame is that I killed the 100% best player in the match with nothing but a deagle, but after that fight I was the last person left on my squad, and I was caught lacking. In game 40, my squad was one by one picked off in Dusty Divot. On incredibly low health, Danny and I were able to avenge them, but it didn't take long for another squad to sneeze on him, and then kill me. In game 41, my squad got into a giant fight in Tomato Temple. We all fought very valiantly, but one by one, everyone died except me, and I was left alone. Scared and left with very lackluster loot, I was attacked by another full squad. I was killed, but at least I took Uni out with me. In game 42, everyone in my squad except for Jeremy landed at Flush Factory. It was very rude of him to desert us, but we did eventually meet up with him in Greasy. The final circle was closed in around Tilted Towers, which is the world capital of getting shot in the back. In the very chaotic final battle, I contributed a single kill, so at least I can say I wasn't carried. Then it was just a very simple 4v1, and those usually don't end well for the one. In game 43, my squad landed Tilted Towers and we contributed to its ever-growing homicide rate by both committing them and becoming victims. Back in Tilted game 44, but its average life expectancy is about 3 seconds, and I'm not an outlier. Lived a little longer in game 45, but in terms of content, it's not much better. In game 46, I was attacked, and thinking quick, I built up to protect myself, but it was in the wrong direction. In game 47, my team got into a little scuffle outside of Fatal Fields. One of them clearly didn't even know I was there and got sandwiched, and the other one was just simply worse than me somehow. Wait, Tian was not worse than me. What was he doing there? I had good loot, two kills, no teammate, but I think I definitely had a chance to win, but it doesn't matter because the server crashed. Honestly. Game 48 was the first game back on a fresh new version of error after a hiatus of like a month, and this version was marked by just a small little tiny duplication glitch. This game was also technically played in the getaway mode, but nothing worked, so it was really just kind of a normal battle royale match with a weird storm. I landed salty and got into a little skirmish at the crack house. Someone else decided they wanted to join in, so I decided that I wanted to do the opposite of that. The winner eventually chased me down and tried to teach me how to fight, so I launched myself in the air and taught him how to dance. His technique was a little lost, so I had to cut him from the performance. I later received a divine gift in the form of two supply drops who spawned right next to each other and right next to me. Oh, it wasn't just two, it was like five supply drops. I was getting absolutely showered by them. I think Mix was spawning them. As I was collecting my holy miracles, a man with a minigun tried to kill me. He got me pretty low because my ping was terrible, but I still killed him. In the final circle with three people left, I was bouncing around in style. After being very annoying, I hit Uni with a rocket and barely killed him, but he hit me with his own rocket. Now in a 1v1 with my confidence at an all-time high, I killed myself. By game 49, I can already see myself getting a lot more confident. I'm engaging in this build fight with nothing but dual pistols and winning, and I can tell my aim's getting a little better too. 
I was still very far from good. I'm horrendous through all these hundred games, but there is a pretty noticeable difference between this and game one. And there's also a pretty noticeable difference between this and now. Game 50, I was running away from retail in my bush and was brutally attacked. My bad, I shouldn't have been wearing designer in these streets. In game 51, I put on the soccer skin as if I thought it'd make me actually good. I did get one kill, which is more than like half of these games, but I still died later. There were less than 10 people in game 52. I never acknowledged it in the original video because it makes what happens next a lot less impressive. It doesn't really matter to me though, because as long as I get to shit on Ali Jacks, I'm having a good day. Oh yeah, I remember this bug. No idea why it happened, but it was very funny. Like an asshole, instead of landing tilted in a game with literally six people, I landed Dusty Divot. I did eventually make it into tilted, where I once again subjected Ali Jacks to the horrors of war. Who cares? I'll move to Argentina before the UN can catch up to me. Dude, what was I doing? There's five people in the match. Just land tilted. Clearly sick of my shit, they launched me into the air and forced me to land tilted. As soon as I touched down on the ground, I was once again attacked by Alley Jacks. I killed him for the third time in a row and like the sixth time in this video. The ops wanted me dead, but they couldn't stop taking L's. Now attacked by the last player left in the match, he couldn't handle the power of my minigun. Those were probably the least impressive back-to-back-to-back -back -back wins in the history of Fortnite but they're mine. Game 55 are no longer in season five. Hope that quench your thirst for season five content from me since I literally made nothing during era season five. Sorry about that, by the way. I have a few games I never made into a video. I'll use them eventually. You'll just have to wait for it. This was the first time I had played season seven since it was originally out. And as the number one season seven fan, you gotta know I was hyped. This was also the last time I played season seven before it came back officially on era. Actually, there's like two more season seven games later in this video, but the point stands. I landed Polar Peak, cause of course I did. And the loot was insane because it's Polar Peak. But uh, the ground broke. Uh, we love early era multiplayer jank. I used the all-powerful spaz to get a kill on Lawwin outside of Shifty Shafts. But as the final circle closed, I was also killed by the spaz because that thing is so insanely powerful. In game 56, I got into a fight on the edge of the final circle as it began to move. I won the fight, but after getting shot, it left me on very low health, so I just danced until I was dead. You kids these days have it too easy. Back in my day, this is how you would put on a skin. Oh, Wailing Woods. I got plenty of drops in you during season 7, but I still miss you. My loot out of Wailing was great, and because I landed at Wailing, I made it to the final circle. I was very scared when the game turned into 1v1, and because I'm terrible at this video game, I did not make it any further. I don't know why I keep getting into fights on the edge of the Blitzstorm. If I was smart at all, I would be running. I shot Danny down and killed him, and then I ran back into the storm like an idiot for his gold spaz. But I really wanted that gold spaz. It's season 7. It's kind of fair. But Garlic Ozzy was watching that whole thing go down and killed me immediately after, so it wasn't really a good idea. In game 59, I got some pretty good loot at a dusty diner, but I failed to use literally any of it effectively. And just as soon as it was here, they stopped hosting season 7, and now we're on season 8. And I vividly remember that after they stopped hosting season 8, I realized my sensitivity was wrong literally the entire time, so the game plays a little bit worse than it even would be. Though I think this kill is pretty clean, even for today's standards. Though in this game, the storm was encroaching fast, a boom bow was shooting at me, and I was on low ground. I didn't win. In game 61, I got a ping on Discord and paused for a second in the middle of Tilted Towers to take a look at it. That was a horrible mistake. In game 62, I launched myself into a build fight that I clearly thought I'd be able to handle. I pulled out this amazing play called opening your inventory in the middle of the battle while you're getting shot at. Next FNCS winner right here. Started off game 63 by performing a ritual of good luck. It didn't work. I know I'm flying through these season 8 games, but that's because precisely none of them are good. I remember I was trying. I was trying really hard. That doesn't mean anything. Just build a box. This wasn't even made during a time in Fortnite where most people were bad anyway. This was two years ago. Latest was on chapter three. This game was on a janky version of Flora's Lava that didn't work correctly because none of the LTMs did. But somehow, definitely by pure luck, I was able to get my first kill since game 60. I unfortunately wasn't able to get any of that loot though and that regen didn't work. Surprise, surprise. After bouncing around on the lava for a good while, I jumped into this fight with a 17 damage shot. He had a spaz and was definitely better than me, so I was panicking pretty hard. We both eventually just resorted to bouncing around on the lava and flailing our arms around hoping to hit a lucky pump shot. And I did. And then I died. Were you expecting anything good from this mess? I mean, look at this gameplay. Okay, I lied earlier, but this is literally the only season eight game that goes even remotely well. I landed Polar Peak and the zone kept closing around me, so I just stayed there literally the entire time. And by the time the zone finally moved away from Polar and I was shot down from my sky base, the other guy died to fall damage or the zone. I don't know which one. I mean, it was a trick shotter, so it was probably fall damage because they're dumb like that. But yeah, it's pretty incredible. I was so bad that even the winds aren't good. The final zone was closing around the soccer stadium and I was armed to the teeth with a minigun and two rocket launchers. Danny, on the other hand, had his Apatron. Jeppy and I got stuck in this room as the zone close to nothing. I won the scuffle, but I lost the game a few seconds later. Now it's time for game 69. I find it kind of funny how the soccer skin styles still don't work in game to this day. I got up some fairly solid loot at Lonely and then went to the volcano to rotate. It's a very dangerous neighborhood though, she keeps some pepper spray on you. I got a minigun in Tomato Temple, but I was never able to use it. I just kind of got shot some more. And then I had to cross this lava river with the eyes of a trick shotter squarely on me. And because I was on the bad side of the storm and blitz, it was faster than me. And I got second place, still repping those zero kills. Salty was a uh, pretty interesting in game 70. I was so infatuated with Balloon Boy there that I didn't realize there was another person in Salty all along. Now, children, can you guess what happens next? Against what was right and good for me, I wandered into Tilted Towers in game 71. And that kill getting stolen is another reason why my KD probably isn't gonna go above one. Okay, this is a once in a lifetime occurrence. You're probably not even gonna believe me that it happened, but I actually did get a fairly decent kill in game 72. Oh, hey, this is the game when vehicles get added. They were very buggy, I remember, but uh, yeah, they're there. And as I was farming materials in the cactus patch, I was interrupted by a roving Andy VV on a quad crasher. And unbelievably, 
absolutely incomprehensibly, I managed to get a second somewhat decent kill in the same game. But remember like five seconds ago when I said vehicles were very buggy? Yeah, I died to that. In game 73, I was minding my own business, farming materials and dusty divot when I was ruthlessly attacked by Curran who had evidently not showered in multiple days. After that brutal murder, I let him know exactly what I thought about it. In game 74, I dropped into shifty shafts with a skin from a phone that I don't even own. I then unceremoniously clingered a fence, boxed myself in, and exploded. In game 75, I landed Polar Peak and never found a shotgun. Thankfully though, a hunting rifle can work just as well sometimes. But the key word in that sentence was sometimes. Chilling around Dusty Divot again in game 76, hopefully I don't die in the worst possible way. Fighting the same guy as last game again and I still don't have a shotgun. But thankfully for me this time, neither did he. Next up, this little default wandered past and he tried to get away with a rift to go, but those didn't work yet. Later made it down by the straight of death and got engaged in yet another fight. But just as I was preparing to die horribly, my opponent was sniped. Pretty happy about that until I realized I had to fight the guy who sniped him, and it didn't go too well, evidently. In game 77, I landed Salty Springs and immediately received two spazzes from the gods. Double pump was still enabled for some reason, so I used them to absolutely obliterate this gentleman. But because at this time, every single game was hosted from Europe, getting shot through walls is a very common occurrence. But despite that, this fall damage was 100% my fault. Avoided dying to fall damage in game 78, but I don't think I'd call getting ruthlessly minigunned any better. In game 79, I got this decently okay kill on the edge of the storm. And I remember in the original video, I don't think I showed how I died in this one. It's been two years, I think I'm finally brave enough to do it. Wasn't too different from any of the others, I'm still getting embarrassed by people who still played Fortnite outside of era. I love when I put on John Wick in these drops, because I know I'm probably not going to perform well, it's just wishful thinking. Putting on aerial assault trooper is still wishful thinking, but it's also a worse skin. There was a man with a boom bow on the high ground, so I had to be extra careful. But clearly he didn't know he also had to be extra careful, because I was able to kill him with one deagle shot. I made it to the final circle with three people left, but it got shot pretty bad just as that storm started to move. And in Blitz, that's pretty much an immediate death sentence. In game 81, I made it to the final circle in a massive sky base, but his rockets were a little stronger than I thought they would be, and I fell to my death. In game 82, I landed retail row and found a man in a bush with the audacity to exist. Later going for the supply drop, I was shot at by a man camping on the volcano. I responded by shooting out his stare, which caused him to fall through the ground to his death. Interesting. In the final circle with four people left, I forgot to close my box while trying to pop a juice box. In game 83, I tried to land somewhere uncontested, but it turned out to be very contested by the best player in the match. Started off game 84 with a quick kill in Leaky Lake. I was then attacked by yet another Ramirez, and out of the three of us, there can only be one, and I had the Fable Cape on. Later on the edge of the jungle, I hopped in for a quick third party. It's crazy how all of these people are somehow worse than me. But those Blitz final zones got really tight. It was really anyone's game, and it wasn't mine this time. Went Pleasant Park in game 85 and got a spaz off rip, so my confidence was clearly a lot higher than it normally is. After leaving Pleasant and I found two supply drops right next to each other, which upgraded both my shotgun and my assault rifle. I don't remember most of these games very well, but this one's honestly looking good for me. Instead of being normal with my good loot, I decided to hide behind a tree instead. But hey, it worked. I was able to surprise and get a kill on this renegade raider. Oh, that was Kobe. I remember him. He was an asshole. In a fight with Curran, which is usually a guaranteed loss, he boogie bombed himself, which allowed me to kill him. But you gotta remember, I'm still terrible, so I lost the 1v1. Oh yeah, I'm back in my element in game 86. This man had no idea what hit him, but it was pretty obvious. It was a plane. The plane gun didn't work yet, so my strategy was just kind of dive bomb into the ground and hope for the best. I mean, it worked against this guy, I was able to pin him on the wrong side of the zone and take him out with the AK. I didn't have my plane anymore, but I did have a balloon, which was enough to bamboozle this guy into submission. And then I killed Alley Jax for the win. Feels just like the 50s again. Game 87 started off by bullying this guy from very far away. He built himself in so I couldn't kill him from all the way up there, so I went down and finished the job. Down near Tilted Towers, I showed this blue knight the power of dance and bullets. Then I did the exact same thing to the final player and won the game. Started game 88 in a plane, and it looks like I'm ending it in one too. Landed in my beloved Shifty Shafts game 89 and bullied the TikTok streamer in front of all of his fans. Gotta throw the default dance in there too, the disrespect. Second kill was an AFK guy in Tilted, I normally wouldn't show this, but I gotta keep track of all the kills for the win counter, cause I don't have notes. Pretty close to that 1KD though, I might actually get it. Final circle was closing around soccer stadium, but because I was closer to the center, I won. Blitz is really that easy sometimes. Started off game 90 by shooting at a man going for a supply drop. We exchanged minigun fire for a brief moment, but I ultimately ended the fight with my rocket. I think that's a foul. As the zone closed near Salty Springs, I got engaged in a fight with TI. But don't let those wins fool you, I'm still really, really bad. And season 7 is gone again. Rip. I decided to play controller in this game for some reason, and my confidence was boosted by being able to kill one person. Wow. But there's a reason I don't usually play controller, and it's because it makes me worse than I already am, and I'm pretty damn bad. Game 92 is duos. I marked Fatal, but my teammate didn't go there. He deserves whatever happens to him. Oh, would you look at that? Looks like someone should have dropped Fatal. I was able to avenge one of his killers, but it's a long shot to ask me to clutch a solo duo situation, especially back then. In game 93, I got trick shotted, and I'm still salty about it to this day. In game 94, I dropped into Greasy Grove with a fellow bunny skin. There's definitely enough room for the both of us, but that would be teaming. That's against the rules. But now it's time for my obligatory death to a renegade raider. It's been a good run. Game 95 was filled with only six people, so I only found one person the entire game. But it was the only person that mattered. 
Game 96 was the same deal, except I didn't kill anyone. Game 97 was a terrible choke. Shouldn't be wearing DJ Yonder. Game 98, I was contested by a bunny skin at this fucked up version of Leaky Lake. That kill was stolen, so in revenge, I stole the thief's life. Fortnite players demonstrate worst aim ever. Asked to leave the mortal plane. Throughout the entire 1v1, Hummy was trying to trick shot me, but I wasn't gonna let that happen again. In game 99, I entered the final battle with a quick little third party. But even though Custix blew himself up, I still managed to lose somehow. And in game 100, Hummy allowed me to trick shot him for a change. I failed multiple times, but that's because I have a life. But eventually, I did hit the least impressive trick shot probably ever. So that's it. And besides the games I have recorded that I never made into a video, that's it, maybe forever. In the middle of editing this video, it was announced that Era is shutting down for good. This video wasn't meant to be a send-off video, but I guess that's kind of the role it took. I want to say thank you to the developers. These are people I've known and considered friends for three years, and I will be forever grateful for this experience and the opportunity to build a small community of my own. The last three years of Era and two years of FMP have been a wild ride, but a really good one. I've had a blast. I don't plan on going anywhere for the time being. I still have a few videos completely planned out, but after that, you're probably going to notice a drastic shift in my content. If I ever have the chance to return to 100 Drops videos, I definitely will. This is the type of video I love making. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for watching, whether this is your first video or if you've been watching for all two years. And thank you to Era for being the fantastic thing it was. It's been a wonderful time. Goodbye for now.